Section 6-2, multiply fractions. Objective, to multiply out to make fractions. Do, 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 do. Now, we're going to multiply algebraic fractions here. It's just like multiplying regular fractions, people. Well, how do we do those? Remember, the intro to chapter 6, fun, flippin' fun, bootay! But let's first talk about the property of quotients and the multiplication rule for fractions. Remember the property of quotients? That was old school, man. Um, A times C over B times D can be written as AB times CD. So um, you just multiply across the top. So you just reverse that, and now you have the multiplication rule for fractions, which is basically when you multiply in fractions, you find the product of the numerators, put it over the product of the denominators. I like to call it fun. I say multiplying fractions is fun because it's the easiest one. All you got to do is do what you think you got to do, is which is just do what you want to do, which is just multiply across the top and the bottom. Multiply across the top, and you get your product, multiply across the bottom. It's the only time you can do it. It's the only time you do what you think you can do. Why is multiplying fun? It's the easiest one. Division, flipping fun, adding and subtracting, booty. We'll get to those later. Now, here we go. So, I'm going to multiply these guys. 14 times, so wait a minute. Isn't there something else we can do? Yes, when we did the fractions section way back, I think chapter 3, we can look for common factors before we even do it. I mean, we're going to reduce this thing. We can factor this guy now, right? Aren't these guys, those guys, isn't 21 the same thing as 7 times 3, and isn't this 7 times 2? So there's 7s in common, aren't there? So don't we reduce like this? Um, well, let's, let's just factor it out. I'll write this guy as 7 times 2 over 5 times 3. This is 4, or 2 times 2 times 5, factoring it all the way out. That's 20, 2 times 2 is 4 times 5, and 21 is 3 times 7. And since when we multiply, we just go across the top and the bottom, these are all going to be one big product on top, one big product on the bottom. And because um, there's a commutative property, it doesn't matter what order you do it in, so you can put like the two there, you can move all these guys all around, move these guys all around. So what do we do? We reduce. We look for common factors. There's a common two. Oh, no, there's not a common two. There's a common three. No, there's not even a common three. What is in common here? Oh, five. Good. That's good. Oh, what? There's a seven. And what am I left with? Two cubed over three squared. So, what is 2 cubed? It's 8, but I can write it as 2 cubed over 3 squared. So I'm going to get 8 over 3 squared, 9, 8 ninths. Now, if I do this dude here, what am I going to do? Well, let's factor this guy. This guy becomes um, an x. I'm just going to write x times y times b times y times y. Hmm, looking kind of similar to this. a times b times x times a. Any common factors? Well, let me see. I got a b, an x. What I end up with? Ooh, y cubed over a squared. So what happens when I get to something like this? Well, you're going to do the same thing, people. You're just going to factor the numerator and denominator here and the numerator and denominator here. Write all the factors out and look for common ones and reduce. So two numbers that multiply to get negative 12 and add to get negative 1. How about negative 4 and positive 3? I factor this guy as x minus 4 x plus 3, this is a difference of squares, so that becomes x minus 5, x plus 5. So if I factor this whole thing out, it's x minus 4, x plus 3, x minus 5, x plus 5. Down here I get x squared minus 5x, I can factor an x out of that. x times x minus 5 times x plus 3, so I get x times x minus 5 times x plus 3. Look for common factors, ooh, x plus 3 x minus 5. Sweet. So what do I get? This in the top, x minus 4 times x plus 5 over x. Good. I can't just go up and do that now because now this guy's in here. It's part of a sum. So that x just stays by itself on the bottom. Where are my restrictions? Before I reduce are where my restrictions are. So before I reduced. So this x minus 5 and x plus 3. x cannot be positive 5 x cannot be negative 3. My restrictions. So to save time from now on, I'm going to stop this restriction stuff because I just want to get through these problems and we're halfway through the lecture. So to save time, we'll assume that no denominator will equal 0. Therefore, it will not be necessary to show restrictions. Okay, watch this. What happens when I have this crazy product? Same thing. I have 9, which is 3 times 3. Oh, look at this. I can just walk up and let me see. I know this is 3 times 3. 3 times 3. I know this is 3 times 5. 
Well, I know there's a 3, there's a 5, there's a 3, there's a 5. Ooh, 18, I can write that as 9 times 2. I can write that as 3 times 3 times 2. And look at that, I got a 3, 3, 2, 3, 3, 2. Well, everything's gone. What did it go? What happened? There's a 1 over 1 left. It's just a 1 hole. Let's see what happens when I do this guy up. I have x over 3 cubed, 9 over x. So I have x over 3 times x over 3 times x over 3 times 9 over x times 9 over x. Well, how? Let's see. I got an x and x and x and x. A 3 and 3. This is a 3 and a 3, you're right. Ooh. There's also a 3 and a 3, and I get rid of 1 there, there. Ooh, look at the whole denominator has been reduced. What's left? A 3 and an x. 3x reduced. If I was going to put restrictions on here, I'd say x can't equal 0. So, what's this here? With a little bit of pizza sauce on it. Don't tell anybody. Um, the rule of exponents for the power of a quotient is as follows. a over b to the m is equal to a to the m over b to the m. Obviously, if I have m a over b's, I'm going to have m a's and m b's multiplying by each other. So if I have x over y to the fifth, obviously it's going to be x to the fifth over y to the fifth. Look, x over y times x over y times x over y times x over y times x over y. One, two, three, four, five. I get x times x times x times x times x times x to the fifth. Y times y times y times y times y to the fifth. Yes, of course. Makes sense. Let's move on. Doesn't it all make so much sense? I love it. I love this subject. I live it forever. This times itself is a negative times a negative. It's going to end up being positive. Let's use the power of exponents here. This is going to end up being x squared. And down here we have 4 squared y squared times um, negative 4y over x, and uh, I'm going to write this guy as x times x. Uh, I should write this guy as y times y. Uh -huh. And I should write this guy as 4 times 4. There we go. Now I can look for common factors. X's are gone, and there's a y that's gone. There's a 4 that's gone. There's a negative still hanging. Don't forget about you. We won't forget about you, Mr. Negative Man. Negative x over 4. Here we go. What about that, huh? You want a piece of that? All right, here we go. What else? We have one more. Number seven. One more seven. That's all we got left. So I got to do one more product. Remember, we're multiplying the numerator and denominator. That's how you multiply fractions. We try to reduce them to make it easier. So what are we going to do? First thing we do is factor. Factor numerator and denominators to see what we get. So I'm going to rewrite the what comes in. Oh, let me see what can I do here in this part. Hmm. There's an r there and an r there. So r times 3 minus t. On this, I'm just going to write a 6r r t. There's a 3 here. It's a factor there. What about 9 minus... Ooh, difference of squares. 3 minus 3, 3 plus t. 3 minus t. 3 plus t. Remember, you're multiplying, so you just now you just have this guy, this whatever this product is over this product. Look for common factors. Are you going to the mall today? That's what I'm asking. 3 minus t. Ooh, 6 is the same thing as 2 times 3, isn't it? Which means this 3 can go... What's left on top? Don't forget, there's a 1 there, because, you know, when you totally factor, there's a little 1. 1's a factor of every number, so if you totally factor something out, you can always drop a little 1 there. You know what I'm saying? 2 times r times t times 3 plus t is 2rt, oh, 2rt, 3 plus t. And you can just write it in that form. That's fine with me. If you're in my class, that's cool. Is that too small for you? Well, tough luck. This lecture is over. So just remember, we're doing the same thing we did with regular numbers. Just like you multiply fractions, you go across the top and the bottom with regular numbers. You can do it across the top and the bottom with variables and expressions. Same stuff, okay? You can do it. You're the best. Look in the mirror. Say it. I can do it. I can do it. I'm going to get an A in math. Woo!